The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. When I was a boy, I wanted to go out and preach. I was around 15 years and then at the youth evangelism school, they have paired us in twos and then they said we should go and preach. The one that I, I, the person I met to talk to was a Muslim, a man. Those days, I didn't know much about Islam. So I started talking to him about Jesus. Then he looked at me, he said, young man, I don't believe this book that you hold anyway. He doesn't believe the Bible. So I cannot speak from the Bible. That was the technical knockout. I stood there looking at him and I was short of words. If our book is saying that he resurrected, fine, it is for you. How do you prove beyond the generation that it is true that he rose? I'm not talking about the proofs of his resurrection. I'm talking about the legacy of the resurrection. The empty tomb. You see, this story, Peter even didn't believe. Thomas thought that that one was too true to be true. So what he decided that was not to be close. He was not part of the company that saw Jesus. When he came and they said, the man has risen, he said, what? I saw him die. So when Jesus appeared again, when Thomas was in the Amis, he intentionally called Thomas and said, Thomas, come. Look at my palm. Look at my side. Then Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Peter somehow, after all this experience, took some of the disciples and then they went back to fishing. The story of the resurrection is, 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 not, is not any wonderful thing. You see, this generation cannot hold on to that. Why? You see, those who saw him, they are not even alive to tell us how. It's only a record. We need something more than just the proofs. The empty tomb. And so what? After all, it was a borrowed tomb. tomb. Was it for Jesus? There are no bones because he was not rotting for, for scientific proof. That it was him. So if you go and they say an empty tomb. Meanwhile, the chief priests and the politicians were working hard to close the matter on the resurrection. They had bribed even the soldiers. Tell people that his disciples stole his body. So now if you say that an empty grave is there to prove, then all of us should go to Jerusalem. To find out if the grave is there. And you must prove scientifically that that grave is for Jesus. If it was only the empty tomb, like by this time, the world, politicians, would have found a way of telling us that it was not his. He said, no, pastor, he appeared to certain people. Where are they? Are they not all dead? Are they not dead? Paul himself didn't see Jesus resurrect. He saw him in a vision. What are the landmarks that can never be raised? I was praying about this message. Then the Holy Spirit taught me what I'm saying now. He taught me. And I said, wonderful. I've never thought about this before. Then I started reading the scripture and I went to a certain passage, a verse that spelled out all that he taught me. So I know that what I'm teaching you is true. 
I'm not saying that there's no empty tomb, but I say you cannot prove beyond Jesus' generation that that was, that because of that, he died and he rose again. No. Because the disciples themselves, who saw him, feely, feely, the empty tomb didn't do anything to them. They were still confused. Jesus said, when he appeared, and even Thomas was there, and he said, look at my palm, look at my side, they were bewildered. And Jesus, the Bible said, and they couldn't believe. You know what Jesus had to do? He had to eat for them to know that ghost does not eat. Still trying to. Uh, let's see what he himself said are the proofs, the legacy of his resurrection. Luke chapter 24. I want you to get me right. These things that I talked about are proofs, but they cannot be carried to our generation. No. The, you see, politicians, <laughs> you go and wake them out of their grave and ask them, the secrets they have taken to their graves, only God knows. What politicians can do, only God knows. They would have buried this matter about Jesus completely, but they couldn't. Because of the things that I'm going to teach by God's grace. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Then he opened their minds, look at that, so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, let's listen to what he said. This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. You understand that? Fine. So, he suffered. He is risen from the dead. Then listen. Say, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So, what will follow his resurrection? That will enforce the fact of the resurrection is a preaching in the name of Jesus. Two, you are witnesses of these things, full stop. That one, two stands. A people are going to be witnesses of the resurrection. Three, I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power. The coming of the Holy Spirit. Three things. Number one. Let me start from the bottom. The coming of the Holy Spirit. Number two. A people. Or the witness. Number three. The name Jesus. These three things. Will live forever and ever. And they will always enforce. That somebody came on the earth called Jesus of Nazareth. He rose from the dead and grave could not hold him. It will always enforce. The disciples with all the resurrection story did not change anything in Jerusalem. But on the day of Pentecost, God intentionally decided that he would bring one of the signs on the day of Pentecost. A festive day when all people of the world have moved into Jerusalem. 